Are you looking for a Christmas gift for the comic book collector in your life and you just don't know what to get them? Well, I've got the answer for you. Go over to my Instagram page. We're right now on sale is the Small Town Collectibles Holiday Comic Book Mystery Box. Every book in the box will either be a key issue, a first appearance, a DC or Marvel number one, or a number one from the indie companies. There's also some really cool covers. But wait, there's more. With every purchase you make, your name gets entered into a drawing for the GPs that I'll be giving away. The more boxes I sell, the better the GPs get. Go over to my Instagram page for the Small Town Collectibles Holiday Comic Book Mystery Box on sale now. Today, we're going to talk about the first appearances and key issues for the greatest day of the week. New Comic Book Day, December 8, 2021. That's coming up next. I'm Jimmy Don Kerr, and this is the Small Town Collectibles YouTube channel. So before we get into talking about the first appearances, the key issues, and all the cool covers coming out this new comic book day, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, do that now. Hit that subscription button. Turn on that notification bell so that you get notified when I put out new content. Smash that like button and leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Also, make sure you hang around to the end of the video. I'm going to announce a weekly giveaway I'm going to be doing with this video and the one that I do on Wednesdays, New Comic Book Day on a Budget. So make sure you hang around to the end to find out how to enter. All right, guys, let's get into our first category this week. And as always, that is the covers. Do have a few uh, covers on the list this week. The first one is from Aftershock, um, and this is Tales of Mother Goose number one. Now, this is a one shot and has a couple of cool covers with it. One is a Scarface homage, and the other is a Pulp Fiction homage. I don't know that I'm gonna pick this book up to read it, find out later down in Key Issues, but as far as covers go, I think these are pretty cool. Two of my favorite movies, uh, Scarface and Pulp Fiction, so I thought I would include these covers on the list this week. Our next cover this week comes from Marvel, and that is X-Men Legends number nine, The Variant by Carrie Andrews. This is called the Adamantium Full Variant. Not even really sure why I like this one. I looked at it multiple times and I was like, you know, it just, it just looks cool. It kind of looks old school. There's a different art style to it as well. And the fact that it's an Adamantium Full Variant, why not include it on the list, right? Next up from DC is Batman 118, the variant cover by Victor Bogdanovic. Now this cover, the one that I'm choosing here, is uh, inspired by Spider-Man number one from 1990. There are three different versions of this cover. You can pick up the trade dress at retail price. There's a silver, a silver full, uh, which I have pictured here on the screen, and that's a one in 25 variant. And then there's a one in 250 variant that is a gold full. So very cool homage cover coming out on the Batman 118 this week. And wrapping up our covers list this week, and if I did a cover of the week, this would be it. I almost took every other cover off. That's how much I like this one. That's Captain America, Iron Man, number one, the incentive cover from Alex Ross. Now, the one I have on the screen is the 1 in 50 variant. The cover A um, for this book is exactly the same. It just has the trade dress at the top but I absolutely love this cover, okay? And I love Alex Ross. He's the goat in my mind, um, one of the best artists out there today. Um, and this Captain America Iron Man cover, it, like it rings every bell for me. And so much so, and I never do this. Like a lot of times these covers come out and you know they've got these big price tags on them. I just wait you know, down the road to see if the price comes down. I didn't on this one. I've already got this one ordered in my cart, paid for, and ready to uh, put in my PC. Captain America Iron Man number one, the Alex Ross variant, is definitely my top cover of the week. With our covers out of the way, let's jump into our next category, and that is always second prints, but for the second week in a row, there weren't any second prints that I could find, so we'll skip right on past that and jump into our key issues. And as always, we start with DC. First up on the list from DC this week is One Star Squadron number one. This is a six issue limited series about a superhero team for hire. Led by Red Tornado, no job is too big or too small from a children's birthday party to an alien invasion. Just hit them up on their app. 
It's when heroism meets capitalism. So that sounds like a fun title from DC. Then we've got Superman, Son of Kal-El, 2021, annual number one, where Jonathan Kent takes on Lex Luthor as Lex returns to Metropolis. So great series thus far, Superman, Son of Kal-El. Interested to see uh, John and Lex go at it. And then one of the books that I'm truly most excited to read um, is World of Krypton. This is volume three, number one, and it's written by Robert Vendetti. Um, of course, I'm a Superman homer. I say that here all the time. But I really liked, there was a last line in the synopsis, and I'm going to read that last line to you um, just to kind of tell you what kind of grabbed me for this title. Now, this is a six-issue limited series. It's a modern telling of one of the most storied periods in comics. Krypton is a utopia admired across the universe for its achievements in science and culture, but its shining towers and regal people can seal a planet rotten at its core. And this is the last line. World of Krypton combines action, cosmic wonder, and political intrigue in a story as much about our current world as the one on the page. So I really love that. You know, uh, kind of, I guess, you know, saying it kind of represents America, you know, the bright, shining uh, buildings and, you know, the people, but at, the, at its core, it's rotten. I'm interested to see that take uh, on Krypton and how it compares to today's society. Next up, we've got Batman number 118, written by Joshua Williamson. This is the book where Tinian gives up the Batman mantle for the time being, and we get a new creative team. This is also the start of a new story arc as Batman leaves Gotham. It's a welcome change for me on Batman. I love Tinian and a lot of the stuff he does on the indie titles, but I wasn't overly impressed with what he did on Batman. So I'm interested to see what Joshua Williamson can do with it and how Batman moves forward. And then wrapping up our list for DC this week is Arkham City, The Order of the World, number three. Now, this book is an origin of Gotham City, and the solicitation mentions the hidden history of Gotham City. So for those Batman fans out there, or you know, any of the Batman titles, um, to find out a little origin about Gotham City and its hidden history, I think sounds interesting and why I included it on the key issues list for DC. All right, let's jump into our Marvel keys for the week. And the first one on the list is Captain America, Iron Man number one. Uh, a government turned Hydra provocateur stages a daring breakout on her way to prison, attracting the attention of both Iron Man and Captain America. When Steve and Tony realize that they both have a connection to the slippery fugitive, they team up to track her down, only to discover that she's not the only player on the board with big plans and sinister motives. So again, I don't know, I'll probably read this just to see how it is, um, you know, as far as a read is concerned, but most likely I'm, this is a cover buy for me, as I mentioned in uh, the covers. I absolutely love that Alex Ross cover. Um, I've already purchased the incentive variant, the one in 50, and I'm probably going to grab a cover A2 just because I like it that much. Next up for Marvel, we've got Devil's Reign number one. This is a six issue limited series continuing from Daredevil 2019, featuring Kingpin as the main antagonist. So, as I said last week, you know, it was the final issue of Daredevil came out, um, and I think I called it Crimson something was the new series, but it is Devil's Reign uh, number one. This is a definite pickup for me. Um, Chip Zdarsky is still on this title and uh, cannot wait to read it and see what Kingpin's got in store for our heroes. Next up, we've got Giant Size Black Cat, Infinity Score number one. This is the conclusion of the Infinite Destinies and Infinity Score story arc that sees the Black Cat collecting Infinity Stones. Then we have Marvel Voices, Community number one. This is an anthology of stories celebrating Marvel's Latin characters we also have Eva joining the Strange Academy. Last book on our list for Marvel this week is Star Wars Crimson Reign number one. This is the story that began with the War of the Bounty Hunters and it continues here with a new five issue limited series featuring Kiara and Crimson Dawn. All right, that is it for Marvel this week. Let's jump over into our indie titles. First up is from Aftershock and that is Mother F Goose number one. This is a one shot interpretation of popular fairy tales with what is described as a Quentin Tarantino twist. That sounds cool. Like I'm probably definitely going to give this one a glance. I love Tarantino. Uh, some of his movies back in the day uh, were some of my favorites. Reservoir Dogs, you know, Pulp Fiction, Kill Bill, the list goes on and on. 
Um, and I mentioned this book in the cover section of the video uh, with the Scarface and Pulp Fiction homages. So yeah, Mother F. Goose number one might be a fun title to check out this week. Then from AWA Upshot, we have Crimson Cage number one. This is a retelling of Shakespeare's Macbeth. A pro wrestler encounters a trio of terrifying beings in the bayou of New Orleans and gets a glimpse of a championship glory if he is willing to do something terrible to achieve it. So, Macbeth, pro wrestler, yeah, check, check. I'm definitely going to give that one a read and see what Crimson Cage number one is all about. Then from Blood Moon Comics, we have a book that's based on a true story, and that is Devil Tree number one. A ruthless serial killer brought his victims to an ancient oak tree. The torment the victims endured is said to have seeped into the grounds around the tree that still stands to this day haunted and visited by thousands every year. So I'm gonna give this a read. I'm also gonna look up where this devil tree uh, is apparently located and stay as far away from it as I possibly can. And I recommend you do the same. Next indie title on the list is from Boom Studios and that is Buckhead number one. What strange secrets lie in the mysterious town of Buckhead, USA? Toba and his mother, a renowned scientist, have just immigrated to the U.S., but instead of living in the big city like Toba always dreamed of, they've moved to a sleepy little town in the Pacific Northwest called Buckhead. In the middle of a picturesque and pedestrian town, Toba discovers that things aren't as perfect as they seem. Toba and his newfound friends find a strange video game, a perfect replica of the town and its people. Soon, Toba is on the run from the Men in Black with his friends brainwashed by microchips. So again, another kind of interesting title and a book I'll definitely give a, a read uh, just to see how I like it. Next up, for all those Buffy the Vampire Slayer fans out there, we've got a new title this week. Buffy the Last Vampire Slayer number one. This is a four issue limited series where an aged Buffy survives in a post-apocalyptic world where a catastrophe has nearly blotted out the sun. Next up from publisher Comics Experience, we've got Space Corpse number one. When an alien species attacks Earth, high schooler Debian Taylor is swept up in the machinery of an intergalactic war and finds himself serving alongside strange recruits from across the galaxy. As the Space Corps' newest enlistee, Debian must come to terms with who he is and the price he is willing to pay for his survival. Then from Dark Horse, we've got Daisy number one. Daisy is a teenage girl who has trouble fitting in due to being eight and a half feet tall, which could be because she is the descendant of a race of cannibal giants spawned from the outcasts of heaven. Let me read that again. Descendant of a race of cannibal giants spawned from the outcasts of heaven. That sounds weird. So weird I may actually want to read that. So that's Daisy number one from Dark Horse. Then from IDW, for all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fans out there, we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Best of Shredder number one. This is a one-shot collection of some of the best Shredder stories written. Then from Image, we've got Lady Mechanica, Monster of Ministry of Hell number one. Uh, this is a four-issue limited series that tells the origin of Lady Mechanica. Then wrapping up the list, of key issues for our indie titles this week. From Vault Comics, we've got Lunar Room number one. Cynthia Sinbreaker used to be a lot of things. A werewolf, a mob enforcer for a powerful mage, a name feared on every street of Solar City. But now she's forcibly retired from all those things, trying to get over her past job and past loves. Zack Zero is a mage with their own agenda, and right now, item number one is to hire some protection. Normally, Sin wouldn't look twice, but Zero may have the key to getting back the most important thing she ever lost, herself. So, another cool title from uh, Vault Studios out this week, and that wraps up our key issues list this week. A lot of good books coming out this week, and as always, an expensive week at the comic shop, am I right? All right, with our key issues out of the way, let's jump into our first appearances this week, and we do have a few. Um, first up from DC, Batman number 118, we get the first appearance of Abyss and the debut of a new bat suit. Also from DC, we've got Green Lantern number nine, and this is the possible first appearance of a character described as a new and ancient enemy referred to as the Anti-Guardian in the solicitation for Green Lantern number 10. 
Also from DC, we've got One Star Squadron number one, where we get the first team appearance of the One Star Squadron. And then from Marvel, we've got Captain America, Iron Man number one, the first team appearance of the Paladins. And then wrapping up our first appearance list for the week is Devil's Reign number one, where we get the first team appearance of Kingpin's Thunderbolts, Crossbones, Taskmaster, Typhoid Mary, Shocker, Whiplash, Rhino, and Craven. So a lot of uh, first appearances out this week as well, if you're a first appearance collector. All right, guys, that's the list for the week. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to start doing a weekly giveaway with uh, this video and the new comic book day on a budget. So if you comment on this video, then I'm going to pull a comment and I'll announce it next week. And you'll get these two books right here. Um, this is the Gotham City Villains number one, that awesome Lee Bermejo cover. And then also a cover I mentioned last week in this video, uh, this Wonder Woman, uh, what issue is this? This is the annual. Um, I absolutely love that cover as well. So all you got to do, leave a comment below in this video, and then I'll pull the comment and then stay tuned next week and I'll announce the winner. All right, guys, that is it for me. I appreciate you coming by and spending a little time with me today here on the channel. I hope this video helps you make some of your choices for new comic book day, December 8th, 2021. Make sure to check out my IG for my holiday mystery box that's on sale. It's been going very well so far, just trying to push them uh, so we can get that next tier unlocked and announce the third tier prize. Also, don't forget to enter into the giveaway, subscribe, like, smash the like button, leave a comment, all those good things. Guys, I hope you have the greatest new comic book day ever. I know I'm going to, as we always end these things. Until next time.